Hello, my name is Peyton, and in this video, I want to go over baking ambient occlusion inside of Unreal Engine 5. So I have this asset here in my more modern uh, home environment, and this is a stove, stovetop uh, that I've kind of been working on, um, starting to get like the model working and all. Uh, and basically, I want to bake some ambient occlusion inside of here. Uh, now, of course, you can use other programs and stuff, but let's say that you're in here. Uh, you kind of want just like a, a quick way to maybe get some AO on there just to make it feel a little bit more integrated into the scene. And uh, overall, yeah, just get some more depth out of it. Uh, so what you do is I'm going to actually start here with my model. Uh, now, this one's actually a little bit unique because this model has not been UV'd yet. Um, so I also want to show off some of the uh, UVing features inside of Unreal Engine 5. So again, similar to some of the other videos that I've done, uh, you do need to make sure inside of your plugins that you have the modeling uh, plugin enabled. And so if you type in model here, you will see the modeling tools editor mode. Uh, you'll make sure that you uh, have that checkbox and then you'll need to refresh if you don't um, have it actually enabled already. Uh, but mine's just by default uh, in here now. But I can go over here to my select mode panel and actually drop down to the modeling uh, features. So this is going to open up this panel over here, which is giving us a lot more options. Uh, we've done a couple of things already in here, uh, kind of using some of the displacement, like in my other video, as well as actually baking um, the textures from a high to low poly. Um, but what I want to do is actually do a big texture where it's specifically using its own model now. Um, and what you'll notice is, like I said before, if I click here, uh, we are going to uh, immediately get the AO starting to be baked on it. Um, but what's going to happen is it's going to most likely have some really messy UVs on it. And that's not what we want. Of course, I could, you know, export it out and everything. Uh, but then I'm going to have to go back into my other modeling software and it just takes a little bit more time. Uh, so let's say that, yeah, we're just trying to move fast in here and I'm trying to do a lot of my stuff in here without having to jump out. Um, this is a, a really nice workflow, uh, workflow to do that. So I'm going to hit cancel here and I'm actually going to uh, make sure down at the bottom uh, and you will find a UV tap. So this is pretty cool because uh, now we can basically do some somewhat primitive as well as like more complex UVing inside of the engine. Um, I haven't played a ton with the actual like seam editing and uh, trying to really like map it um, to the level that you might do in something like uh, Maya. Um, but at least it does have some pretty solid like starter stuff, uh, especially for quick workflow like we are doing now um, to use that. And so if I actually click here on the layout, you'll see that this is going to go uh, a little bit like transparent. And then it's pulling up a 3D version of our layout of this model here. Uh, and that's what we're seeing over here. I can kind of yeah, move that around, see what it looks like. And we can see that you know, it's pretty messy overall. Um, but I'm going to turn that off. And what I'm going to do for this one actually is I just want to use the auto UVs. Um, this one's, it's not going to be perfect, but it will at least get us uh, to a decent state where we'll be able to make our ambient occlusion on. Um, so now that I hit auto UVs, you can see that it's brought up the details panel for the UVs and everything. Um, I have UV channel uh, zero, and so you can select which UV channel for your model that you'd like to have the UVs supplied to. Um, then there's a couple of other things like the, the pa patch builder and then the different patch amounts um, by default. These are set to 100 and 1024. Um, and then there's just yeah a couple of features here. And then um, the polygroup layer, preview material, and so forth. Um, what I'm going to do here is I am going to bump up the resolution uh, just a little bit. Um, and overall, you can see that the squares are doing pretty solid all around. Um, so the the auto UVs are yeah, pretty solid, um, but where it gets a little messy is just some of the stuff up here. Uh, and I found that at least like bring it up some, I'm going to type in 500 and yeah, see what that does. 
So I'm just trying to get something that, yeah, cuts it up a little bit more uh, and get some nice variation to it. So I think that might not be too bad. Um, but just for these purposes, yeah, I'm going to do it to a thousand. Um, that way I make sure that I have like, yeah, full breakup with everything. So there we go. And now I'm going to hit accept. So now that has our new UVs. Uh, now actually getting into the baking method. Uh, now that we have our UVs and everything, I'm going to come back down and go to my bake textures for single meshes. And I'm going to select that. And we can see that it's already starting to yeah, get a preview here. Um, now you can see that by default, um, this feature will not have anything on. Um, so you will need to, uh, just like we did with the bake all uh, textures, uh, you'll have to click here and basically select what you'd like to bake. Um, so for this instance, I did want to bake ambient occlusion. Um, so I'm going to select this here. And then we can see that, yeah, we already had that AO kind of being baked on uh, previously. And then I can select the uh, preview output type. Uh, then there's the resolution. Right now it's just 256 by 256. Let's say that we bump that up to a 1024 by 1024. Um, hopefully, yeah, it starts to resolve some of those issues that we were getting previously. Uh, and overall, I would say that's a pretty solid bake so far. Uh, we can see that, yeah, we're getting a lot of information in here. Let's say that I bump it up to 2048 by 2048, just so we have a really solid, you know, um, texture resolution. It's matching a lot of the, uh, just the detail that I'm wanting in my scene. Uh, everything's pretty clean and you're not going to be like, oh, it looks a little bit low res. Uh, so I think overall, yeah, it's working pretty nicely. Um, of course, you can change the bit depth and the samples per pixel. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more time to actually, uh, you know, render it out and uh, get the results with the bake. Uh, but you should get a little bit more accurate bakes as well and uh, just more detail as well with that. Um, but yeah. I'm probably going to switch back to one just because I don't want to necessarily wait for this uh, to compile with what it's doing. But um, just for yeah, reference, the bit depth and samples per pixel, uh, if you're patient with those, uh, they should give you some better results with uh, the, the baking and all. Um, but now that we have that, let's say that we're good with all this. I can also change the yeah, occlusion output, uh, some of the details here. Um, but overall, like I would say the results that we're seeing, I can flash between these two and see uh, what's being added. I think it's doing awesome just for the baking of this mesh. Um, so now I'm good with that. I'm going to hit accept. So now uh, you'll notice that, yeah, asset location is going to go into wherever uh, folder that you've selected. Uh, mine should be dropped it into my uh, location where my stove is because it's the current folder of the mesh itself. Uh, so that's yeah down here, and we can see that we have our uh, ambient occlusion um, down here uh, actually baked out. And so what we can do with this now is if we have our material, which this is using my block out material right now, um, but I'll bring this over on the screen. And if I drag in my ambient occlusion and then plug it in, just like uh, traditionally we plug in the materials and all. Now this scene that I'm actually in here uh, is using ray trace ambient occlusion. So the method of using like these um, maps and all isn't necessarily valid. Uh, however, uh, for purposes like if you're not, you know, doing a super realistic scene using ray tracing, trying to do it that way, and you're wanting the traditional way of actually baking an ambient occlusion map, um, then you can get some pretty solid results in here. And as we saw in the preview, uh, that is showing up um, pretty nicely as well on our mesh. Um, so yeah, that's about it for this tutorial, just going over actually how to bake an ambient occlusion of a prop inside of an environment and getting it set up that way. That way you can just do it all inside of Unreal Engine 5 instead of having to go to another software if need be. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found that helpful and I will see you next time.